The ships ran aground because beneath the calm waters of the lagoon lay a treacherous underwater terrain of shallows and mudflats that wrecked the enemy fleet. So it would be here the settlers built Venice. The waters of the lagoon would protect Venice from land attack, while the shallows would make attack by sea impossible. The city would be a miracle of its geography. But its location would also make life hard for the first Venetians. In summer, the heat and humidity can be almost unbearable. In the early days, malaria killed off many Venetians. In winter, the city lies exposed to the snows and biting wind, beating down from the Dolomite Mountains to the north. Banks of fog sweep in across the flatlands of the lagoon and settle over Venice like a deep impenetrable blanket that clings to the narrow waterways. But the early Venetians set about making their new home into a place to live and work. They would expand the inlets and rivers of the Rivo Alto Islands into the greatest network of canals ever created. Today, distracted by fine churches and palaces, we forget the first great success of this city was its canals. They are triumphs of early engineering, but they have always been a delicate balance harnessing the tidal waters of the lagoon to man's needs. Tica, dai con questa martellina, dai più forte, dai che non si rompe qua, dai più forte. Metti nervo, metti, dai. Oh! Qui c'è sporcizia fino in fondo, eh? Every few years, each canal has to be blocked by a dam, then drained so that the wood piles and the foundation walls can be repaired. Hey, questa roba non puoi tenerla così perché non puoi camminare. E te metti la in acqua? La 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 il passaggio deve stare sempre libero. Posa gli attrezzi, posa gli attrezzi sì. qua e okay. lavora con due mani Perfetto. perché hai due mani. Ok. Mezz'ora di pausa, fumiamoci una sigaretta. The spreading network of canals shaped the city that grew up around them. Houses lined the canals and bridges crossed them. Water would define the very layout of the city. Both the abundance of salt water and the need for fresh water. Here in Venice, we are all surrounded by salt water. So it's very difficult to find fresh water to drink. So what did they decide to do? They made some wells to collect the rainwater and they stored it in underground tanks there was a, these, all these four parties to filter the water in the sand. They went down in an underground tank. You see, this is the old stone, and here there is the tank. And then all around the well, uh, there was the normal life. There were the houses. They were living day by day. Each square had its own small community. 
They were tightly knit and tightly packed. Each bridge crossed was a journey into a different territory. There were feuds, and one feud in particular between the Nicolottis and the Castellanis. The Nicolottis and the Castellanis were gangs, sworn rivals. They hated each other. The hatred led to fighting, blood and death. The fights became known as La Guerra dei Pugni. The Castellanis were shipbuilders. They wore red hats and scarves. The Nicolottis were hard-living fishermen. They wore black. Castellani women wore flowers on one side of their breast and the Nicolotti on the other breast. Blood feuds continued for generations. So Venice needed strong government to impose law and order. It was to evolve a system like no other in the world, and a ruler unlike any other, the Doge. The Doge was an elected ruler, head of a republic, not a monarchy. His descendants couldn't inherit, but he did live in a palace. The Doge's Palace is one of the most extraordinary buildings in the world. There has been a palace on this site from the early 9th century. From here, for almost a thousand years, the Doge ruled Venice. The present building is a mix of Gothic and classical, east and west, the marriage of styles that would come to define the look of Venice. The Doge could enjoy a fine palace at a time when other rulers hid themselves away in heavy medieval fortifications. Venice was beginning to exhibit the confidence that came with its miraculous location, impregnable to attack, protected by the lagoon. At the top of the giant staircase in the palace courtyard are the figures of Neptune and Mars, the gods of the sea and war. It seemed as though Venice had tamed them both. This was the ultimate seat of power. The Doge presided over the ruling council here. Laws were made here and justice dispensed. Even the state prison was part of the palace. And at its center, the Doge lived in splendor. This is your Downing Street, Houses of Parliament, Tower of London, and Buckingham Palace rolled into one. Throughout the palace, Venice is represented as a beautiful woman. In painting after painting, she appears